This video is brought to you by Midway USA. Support the channel by choosing Midway for your shooting and outdoor supplies. If you haven't seen the Dragunov We Have at Home video that we released just not too long ago, I would highly recommend checking it out because as we filmed this video for the PSL, we had no knowledge of the exact heat shift pattern that the PSL exhibited, which the first rounds would be clustered, a decently tight group, and then as soon as it heats up, it just goes down and spreads all over the place. So as you watch this video, notice, look for that type of a pattern, and you'll see a lot of the misses down and off to the sides. Enjoy the show. The Americans are coming! <laughs> We're on at target number one. Alright, literally every other Middle Eastern battlefield trouble zone sniper in footage you see, right? Yep. Impact. Impact. Okay. Okay. Target two! Impact! Impact! Target three! Just off the right edge, up at his shoulder line. Impact, dead center. Impact, stacked it. Okay. I'm on at 300. Impact, that was on the left edge, good elevation. Impact. Okay. Well, we will proceed. Target five. Impact. Oh, I did not lock it back. Impact! That's done there. Okay. Next target, left of the pigs, 400. Okay. Impact! Just off the right edge. Impact! Okay. Four fifty. And I am dialed in at 400 uh, meters. Should be good. Impact. Impact. Okay. Dude, those hit with some serious authority on that target. Indeed. Okay. 500. Okay, left by about a half a target. Good elevation. It was, uh, it was right in there. Impact. Just off the right. Ah, I see it shifted. Just off, uh, it was just slightly low off the left edge. Just off the left edge, good elevation though. Just bottom right. Impact. Okay, finally. Fire one ready. Okay, that was in short 
just short of the target on the right edge. That oh. one sailed off to the left. Impact. Uh, was it? That was just left. Hey, sl slow down, slow down. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. So one thing that's that's somewhat known about PSLs is that they, uh, they are affected by heat. Yeah. And those last few rounds were all the same hold. Okay. Well, we've got multiple factors going on. The wind is is gusting significantly, so your left to right is going to be dealing with that. And the one that I called an impact, I really think it was, but I'm I. It also could have been a splash right on the bottom right of it. Okay. Impact. Okay. Okay, 725. Okay, got it. That was just on the right edge, just under him. Impact. Nice. 800, final target. Okay, the windage was great. Just come up a half a target left. You were just underneath it. Yeah, just low. Just off his right edge. Good elevation. That's the elevation. Impact. Nice. Good, good show, dude. This particular one, the barrel, I don't know if it's a re kit rebuild. It is a Romanian import. So it is a Cougar factory build rifle. But the Trenion right here shows that it was built in 1975. Uh, so this one has been gas checked with a KNS piston in it, which is why if you are able to see the uh, brass right here is right on the ejection port. Um, Whereas when I first got it, it recoiled so much that it cracked the handguards in the front because the gas port was just drilled so so wide and it was a lot more difficult to get a controlled second shot on. Um, I would say with uh, the 174 grain Sierra Match King load that uh, closely duplicates what uh, actually the loading is very close to an M118LR loading because that's a 175 Sierra Match King. It actually matches what the turret is giving out on the elevation change. So it's a very interesting system, uh, but this is such a popularized system, I would say more so in the firearms community or veterans who have deployed, I would especially say Iraq and Syria uh, you tend to see these a little bit more than Afghanistan. Um, regardless, I mean, there's a lot for us to talk about as yes. far as this goes. So, big AK, hit target, very far away. We have succeed. We will see you in debrief. Well, hello there. I was only at the local Kavava searching for a delicious vintage. I hope you're enjoying the show thus far. Shows like this, they're made possible by Slate Black Industries. But more importantly, we have the support of the patrons of Patreon. That's right, this magnificent group of men and women. They support us financially, intellectually, and more importantly, emotionally. So today, I'd like to invite you, come, join us, become one of us. Together, we could discover the intricacies of firearms development. But if not, that's okay. 
we'd be just as happy to hear from you in the comment section below. But for now, let's get on with it. All right, there you have it. That was the PSL. The much anticipated dumpster fire that we knew about. Yeah, that, I mean, look, that was a pretty rough run. I, you know, some of, piece of me can, like, really considers, would we have thought that this was a very bad run when we first started running the show? Because we know that the skill that you and I have developed over time has definitely allowed us to shoot better scores with the same rifles. We've sort of proved that now a few times with a few different rifles we've brought on the show and uh, brought back for a second run. But but even considering that, uh, I still look back at this and I go, yeah, for a DMR run to, to be struggling inside of 500 and then continuing to struggle the rest of the way, it just does not seem very good. Yeah, I, I think, I mean... If it were the very early days of us running this course as well, I don't think it would have finished the course. I just mm -hmm. don't. Um, yeah. But I mean, let's let's look at some of the past DMRs that we've 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 shot on the same 800 yard DMR course. The Dragonov, the Chinese uh, copy of the Dragonov, the NDM 86, passed with flying colors. You're talking about the um, Yugo M76. Sailed through no issues. Um, you're talking about some of the even more difficult ones. The FRF-1 and the FRF-2. Specifically the FRF-1 because of the scope. <laughs> Shot it yep. very well. Yeah. I, I mean... <sighs> and then I, when you start to look at any of the NATO, the NATO stuff, I, it's even It's just better, no contest right? at that point. Right. Yeah. Yep. So... With that in mind, like thinking through and going, yeah, we both kind of consider this to be not a particularly good run. Well, then it's incumbent on us to give some rationale as to why we think it didn't perform as well as some of the other DMRs out there. And I know that you have some particular history with the PSL that we've documented in no small part on our Dragonoff We Have at Home video that is live on the channel already. So if you, uh, if you want to get into some of the more detailed specs surrounding what Henry's about to describe, definitely check out that video. But yeah, Henry, walk us through sort of your experience with both this particular unit as well as some of the other PSLs you've dealt with uh, over, I don't know, the last 10 years. Yeah, so... Uh... Personally, it has. I don't. I wouldn't say it troubles me, but it bothers me a little bit that that guys would describe the PSL on the same token as a Dragonoff. It just isn't. I mean, it looks similar outside of functionally, outside of the actual design of it being different. The performance is also vastly different. Yes, the Dragonoff does end up hitting heat shift, but once it heat shifts, it doesn't go all over the place. Mm. And that's something that I had never figured out up until we started delving down this project. Now, people out there don't know, we've had this PSL for more than a year that we were working on, precisely because in the past I've had three of these. And so I hear people talk about how good or how bad the PSL is. Some guys are saying that it's one MOA, I mean, first of all, that's a little... I mean, I get one and a half, two, maybe. I understand that, but one MOA is a little little on the short. I mean, the, it could happen. It could happen. You could get a one MOA PSL, but then there's also a tremendous amount of people who are disappointed, especially recently when the prices of these things have soared north of the 2,000 range that people have expressed their disappointment in the rifle and the and their purchases because they think it's inaccurate and that has been my experience with every one of them but it wasn't until we put this on paper that I was truly able to figure out what this rifle was doing uh, mac over at military arms channel likes to call it psl things um it's just downright, it, they're heat issues. They are severely impacted by heat problems. 
And the interesting thing for the audience out there to realize is that when we filmed this segment and when we filmed the Speedway segment, we did not know about the heat issues. And it wasn't until we went back and shot the consecutive four targets to see how the rifle first dropped a cluster. And then as soon as it heat up, it started spreading out downwards and outwards on, on, the, on the target. And once we learned about that, we correlated it back to the um, practical accuracy segment you see here and then the speedway segment, and it actually correlated. It correlated 110% because at first it was actually tight. The first targets were actually very tight. And then once I think we got to, what, 300 or so, it started throwing you, rounds you, to the left and right. You had one miss at 250 that was probably just... But at around 400... 400 you start you have a miss you cleared 450 then 500 it, it, it's all over the place and that by that point in time you were about 20 rounds in and based on the testing that we performed that's where the group went from a two-ish moa group to a five moa group and that exactly as you say it correlated directly with what we were seeing downrange on this practical accuracy run now, I think this underpins another issue with heat when it comes to shooting precision, um, especially with a lot of North American shooters or Western shooters. Uh, one of the things that we typically are trained to do, we're chasing the wind. We're chasing the last environmental that was sent. And so when you're dealing with a rifle that tends to have heat issues extremely soon into its shooting segment, what ends up happening you'll fire, your rifle then heats up. You fire the next round, and if you don't know there's a heat issue with a rifle, you think that, okay, that's an environmental call. You know, there must have been a gust of wind that pushed it this way or that way. You, uh, you then um, modify what you're doing to refocus on uh, correcting for that last impact, and then the heat is actually pushing it elsewhere. And then you're chasing... You're basically chasing ghosts at that point. But what the big problem is, as you're chasing the wind, as you're chasing the last environmental, you're continually heating the rifle up. And as the rifle gets hotter, the group spreads out even more. And in this particular rifle, it would I think we had it clocked that at the 30th, 30-ish mark in quick succession rounds, it would drop about three MOA and spread out to a six MOA pattern, which you're, that is far outside of the span of where your target is. So then outside of looking at where that cluster groups on the target and you chasing the, the rounds around, it's, it turns into an impossibility to hit the target. Yeah, it's, it becomes luck, Yeah, right? It becomes luck because your cone of fire, your cone of deviation is big enough that at a 500 yard target with a cone of fire that's 20 inches or greater on the on a target that's a sub torso or vital zone target you're you're it's all about luck is mm -hmm. the round going to impact inside you know and hit the target or is it going to decide that it's going to go to the far left of the extreme the far right of the extreme mm -hmm. and then to your point if if you see that the round comes in short and i call it's in short and then you raise higher, the next round's going to sail over the top. You know, there's no, it, it all comes down to luck. Right, and, and I, that's, I, that's exacerbated by the fact that we did not know that it had this type of heat issue. Cause in the because past, if we did know, you, you would have just held, mm -hmm. right? You would have picked a spot and fired until you collected the hits because at some point, the rounds will strike within the, Correct. the target zone, within the, the wider cone of deviation. Correct, because now we're looking at two different heat issues here because the SVD, the, the actual Dragunov, and the M76 both also had have heat shift issues. But once they shift, they stay there. The cluster stays there, so it doesn't open up. And that's mm -hmm. the problem with the PSL. Not only does it shift, it opens up. So... Right. Though that's the that, double whammy. You have yeah. to know that it's going to move, and then once it moves, it also opens greater, which is correct. It, it, obviously, much worse. Correct. Much worse. Yeah, I mean that the the interesting thing for this, to be honest, I mean audiences out there, they they may not know that we held the rifle for a whole year plus and came up with all this data before we were comfortable with publishing it. 
but that's the interesting thing uh, is going through this entire journey of testing it and then correlating data and then having the data actually support what we saw before that is the most interesting thing to sort of unlock some of the these these questions that I've always had about the rifle because in the past everyone I talked to has just been the rifle is inaccurate or the mm-hmm. rifle is fine but at the same time how do you shoot it do you let it right. cool down sufficiently so maybe the PSL for guys who do want to shoot it in really tight groups yeah you could cool it you could you could keep it cool and it could shoot well there's some there's some good examples of that, Henry, right? I know, you know, obviously, Rob at AKOU and Vintage Rifle Shooters Club, he has documented cases of his PSL being uh, quite accurate and quite tight. And to mm-hmm. be fair, when you shot your first grouping with the PSL, the 80% grouping or the 90% the ninety grouping was sub two inches. Right. Which for this type of a rifle, sub two inches is... It's great. Uh, quite good, right? Yeah. That's very good. That's going to get you torso or sub torso hits out to basically 700, right? Maybe right. even further. So, so, it, it, so yeah, it, I think it really comes down to how you want to use it. Like if you want to use it, like Rob um, is a, he's a, he's a U.S. sniper. He's an American U.S. Army sniper. Uh, so his doctrine that he's trained at and, and the way he shoots, even on his show, he doesn't, push rounds like we do we push a substantially tap tap next target tap tap next target tap tap right yeah rifles that that go through our hands experience a significantly greater amount of heat than they do in his hands uh right and so i've talked to him i've talked to him as we pushed psl footage out i i told him hey rob you know this actually doesn't mesh up and rob and i ended up talking for a while in trying to chase this down and as soon as we correlated it the target and seeing that how heat affected it, it, it made sense for both of us. It's the way yeah. you shoot it. But that's the biggest point on the PSL though. The PSL was not designed to be shot one shot, two shots, and then you bug out. It's designed mm-hmm. to be a Soviet sniper. So that semi-auto function is vitally important because you're supposed to support infantry movement in a platoon level uh, engagement. Mm-hmm. And, and so you're expected to push more than one or two rounds down range. You're expected to actually use it to engage the enemy. So if the rifle itself has issues, like let's not even talk about the PSL has a tendency of self-destructing. Like yeah. if, we, if we just purely look at the heat issues that the PSL has and correlate it to the way it's supposed to be deployed, that's a big problem because you are basically, after your first magazine, ineffective for the marksman who yeah. does not know that you have a heat issue. Yeah. And even if you do know that you you have a, a movement of the group with heat, it's still, as we previously discussed, it opens up to the point where you can't just make an adjustment to your hold, then you're losing your accuracy potential at yeah. that point because the group is getting bigger. So, I mean, yeah, so basically, I mean, this is the conclusion that you, you came to in your Dragon Off We Have at Home video, which is the PSL fails in its uh, designed role, right? It does not do what it needs to in order to be effective in its design role. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are interested, all of this data that we're referencing in this conversation is all available with graphics and uh, stop screen, freeze frame detail in the Dragonoff we have at home video. So be sure to check that out as well. Mm -hmm. Now, Henry, one of the final points that I think we need to address here I've noticed some comments that, well, we must be shooting civilian versions or or seconds, basically like factory seconds uh, that are available to the civilian market and that the military, quote unquote, version of this this particular platform doesn't suffer from these same issues. I mean, talk us through the specs that you know about on this particular rifle and whether or not you believe that to be accurate or not okay so uh first of all uh, we have weather here uh oh. first of all uh for anyone out like there, you had somebody fall down a staircase oh uh, no it's 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 severe weather we're <laughs> for the audience we're supposed to be filming outside today but this is just not 
we'd like to not get fried by lightning. Uh, and, and as you imagine, carrying a metal rod in the middle of the field on a tower would, would very much not be the ideal way <laughs> of uh, conducting yourself in this type of weather. But anyways, I digress. Um, oh, my, my, so my time with the, with the PSL, uh, or this particular PSL. Um, so it's interesting, every now and then we get people, um, I don't, if you know something we don't know about the Romanian arms industry and whether they have two lines or not in producing a civilian spec or a military spec PSL, please let us know. If you're an insider, please let us know. I have actually worked with a Romanian arms industry during my time in Europe. Um, this particular one is a 1970s dated Trunnion with an all matching uh, all matching parts. Meaning, looking at the parts itself, uh, the muzzle device, the Trunnion, the bolt carrier, every everything, it all matches. So it looks to me that they took a military rifle from the 70s, torched it, and recombined it under a new receiver and took out the um, the um, the safety sear because the safety sear is what the ATF considers as the machine gun part, um, and they turned that into a. Uh, a commercially available product in the in 2019 I got this mm -hmm. if so you to, to the best of our to the best of our knowledge though this is a military matching, rifle outside matching of the kit on a military rifle right exactly. correct the barrel was also matching so the, the fun fact this actually um, shoots this gassing is actually way worse than the current offerings on the market so technically if you were to say these military rifles are actually worse on the gassing <laughs> than the current new production line rifles and oh henry you're a heartbreaker this is my presumption on this um the current offerings probably doesn't have a lot of i mean if you look at it, right, your Russians have the um, have the Tigers, the the SVD Tigers, or the actual SVDs. If you wanted to buy from them, you, the Yugoslavs, or sorry, the Serbians have the um, M91. That's also a 54 rim um, Dragunov we have at home. And then the Romanians are still working the PSLs. Presumably, if you were a third world country that really wanted a 54 rim rifle. And you really could not find any old stock Dragunov or anything like that. Presumably, you could still buy it from uh, the Romanians to supplement your military. But with a market that has the amount of 762 semis that are pumped into it, you would you would imagine that the market for newly manufactured semi-auto Soviet sniper systems would be severely limited, especially when you have the American market paying, let's say, multiple times the cost of manufacture of one of these things for mm -hmm. one of these rifles. I would presume that, kind of like what Norinko did, and very much Kudir operates like old school Norinko in the 80s, they would be most incentivized to sell a better civilian commercial version to match up that, you know, that bling bling price that is being sold in the States rather than mm -hmm. some Somali warlord who wants them for next to peanuts. Um, so that's a long roundabout way of saying, if you know better, let us know and tell us exactly where on the line that you saw that these specs are very, very different. But my thought is, if you were comparing the military versus the civilian, I think the civilian probably has a better chance of being a better rifle. And that is if there is such a thing that it is a military versus a civilian PSL. Right. If there is a difference that exists. Outside of the safety <laughs> seer, of course, because the ATF actively, actively bans the importation of things with a third pin and a safety seer in it. So anyways... And so, there you have it. That's our take on the PSL. It, well, 
And it isn't that great. Oh, Josh. Josh, we still have plenty of hearts to break. Because, don't forget, despite this being a dumpster fire, I twisted Josh's arm and saying, Josh, no, no, no. We need to do a speedway on this <laughs> to see how it does. Can we miss faster? And, and, and Can if, we miss faster? If you out there think that the heat issues affect it on a slow fire practical accuracy course oh baby you have not seen the speedway yet no brutal all right ladies gents guys gals we appreciate you guys tuning in of course as always youtube is making it as hard as possible for gun and uh, gun content creators out there right now such as us here at nine hole reviews so like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all of the things to try to boost us in the algo if you enjoyed the episode. Of course, also check us out on 9H Podcasts, where Henry does awesome interviews with wide ranges of varying people of various shapes and sizes. And uh, just a quick shout out uh, to the Moose Deer for making this run uh, particularly exciting. Until next time, we'll see you on the range. Now, usually this is where Josh and I would close off, but I would like to tell people that we are now also available at Utreon and Rumble. Uh, it's taking uh, a while yes. to upload stuff onto Rumble, but um, for reasons that are YouTube right now, um, we've had to branch out quite a bit more. So if you decided to see us there, drop a comment there as well, and we'll do our very best to respond if we see it. Impact! Neutralize! Impact! Neutralize! Impact! Neutralize! 716 is Joe Knight 6, 4 Vic, 8 Pat, Redcon 1, Green to Green, top copy over. Joe Knight 6, this is 716, Roger over. 116, Joe Knight 1, 1 Pat, Green Green, over. This is 716, Roger over. Two, one big door, two packs, break on one, open.